Good morning, dear students of class 12. Welcome to this English online learning class. And today we are going to further continue with the lesson The Rat Trap by Selma Legolov. In part one, we discussed about the rat trap peddler who wandered from place to place selling rat traps. And sometimes he also compromised with his principles, resorted to begging or petty thefts. He looked very miserable. His clothes were in rags, cheeks sunken, and hunger gleamed in his eyes. One day, a very wild idea came to his mind and which seemed to give him some kind of sadistic pleasure. And this line of thought was that he compared the whole world to a big rat trap, which is offering riches, material possessions to people. And people get trapped. And once they get trapped, it is their end. Now one day, during his wanderings, he got very late and he decided to take some shelter without expecting one because nobody would give shelter to such a man. He knocked on the door of a grey cottage by the roadside he never expected shelter, but surprisingly, an old crofter opened the door and not only offered him shelter, but became a perfect host and treated him like an honorable guest. The crofter shared his porridge, his tobacco, played a game of majolis with him and also shared his deep secrets where he had saved the money which he had earned hard. He not only told him the amount that he had saved but also showed him the place where he had kept the saved amount 30 kroners. And the next morning, when both the crofter and the rat trap peddler went out, the rat trap peddler betrayed the trust of this crofter by returning back and stealing the 30 kroners. Then, Instead of taking the main road, he took the road of the forest and he was happy with his smartness. Now the crofter shared all this information because he needed somebody to talk to. And the crofter was suffering from acute loneliness. His wife had died, he had no children. So he had nobody to talk to or share his secrets. But the rat trap peddler betrayed the trust of the crofter by stealing his 30 kroners, his hard-earned money. Later, when he lost the way in the forest, he realized that he had fallen into a trap. And when he was about to fall down because of extreme exhaustion. He heard the sounds of hammer coming from an iron mill. So he moved in the direction of that sound and reached Ramjo's iron works. There he took shelter. Nobody refused. Neither they invited him. And he was just lying very close to the hot furnace when the iron master who had come there for nightly rounds came, saw him and also addressed him as Niels Olof. 
Now, the rat trap peddler thought it to be a way to earn some money in the form of charity. <clears throat> As this iron master, who was a rich, influential man, had mistook him to be his old acquaintance, Niels Elo. And the rat trap peddler thought it an opportunity to earn some money in the form of charity. When he started asking him about his life, like, why did you resign from the regiment? It was a great mistake that you made. If only I had been in the service at the time, I would not have allowed you to resign from the regiment. See what is your condition. Now, to go along up to the mayor's house and be received by the owner like an old regimental comrade, that however did not please the run. Now, the iron master was going a step further by telling him, well, now I have found my friend Neil Solov, an old comrade, you can come with me to my house. You will come with me. He invited him to his house. But now the peddler realized that he would be committing another mistake by accepting his invitation to go to his house. And he made an excuse. No, I couldn't think of it. He said, looking quite alarmed. He thought of the 30 kroners. To go up to the mayor's house would be like throwing himself voluntarily into the lion's den. He only wanted a chance to sleep here in the forge and then sneak away as inconspicuously as possible. So this was his planning. He had already got 30 kroners which he had stolen from the crofter. Now, accepting the invitation of the iron master would be putting himself into further trouble. So he declined the offer of the invitation of iron master to go to his house. The iron master assumed that he felt embarrassed because of his miserable clothing. Iron master thought that maybe the peddler his friend Niels Olof, his so-called friend Niels Olof, is feeling bad because of his clothing. Please don't think that I have such a fine home that you cannot show yourself there, he said. Elizabeth is dead, as you may already have heard. My boys are abroad, and there is no one at home except my oldest daughter and myself. We were just saying, that it was too bad we didn't have any company for Christmas. Now come along with me and help us to make the Christmas food disappear a little faster. So it was a polite way of inviting. He said, my daughter and I'm staying all alone. My wife is dead and my son is abroad. My sons are abroad. So it would be good if you join us for the Christmas Eve. But the stranger said no, and no, and again no. And the Iron Master saw that he must give in. Because this is friend Neil Solov. And really it was the peddler who, was, who kept on saying no, no, no to the invitation. The Iron Master had to finally give up. It looks as though Captain Von Steyl preferred to stay with you tonight, still strong, he said to the master blacksmith and turned on his heel. So he referred to him as Captain and he said to the blacksmith staying strong that probably he wants to stay with you and he left the place. But he laughed to himself as he went away, and the blacksmith who knew understood very well that he had not said his last word. So, 
The iron master laughed to himself as he was leaving, and the blacksmith also knew that these are not the last words of the iron master, because the iron master would never take no as an answer. He would somehow. He would somehow convince the peddler, his friend Niels Olaf, Captain Von Steel, to come to his house. So, what plan he further made? It was not more than half an hour before they heard the sound of carriage wheels outside the fort, and a new guest came in. But this time, it was not the Iron Master. He had sent his daughter, apparently hoping that she would have better powers of persuasion than. He himself. He felt. The iron master felt that his daughter has better powers of persuasion of persuading his friend Niels Olaf to come to his house. So he had sent his daughter to bring Niels Olaf, his friend, who is actually the peddler. She entered, followed by a valet servant. Carrying on his arm a big fur coat, so she was all prepared. A, a valet, the servant was carrying on his arm a big fur coat. She was not at all pretty, but seemed modest and quite shy. She was not pretty, but was very modest and shy. That was her quality. In the forge, everything was just as it had been earlier in the evening. The master blacksmith and his apprentice still on the sat on their bench, and the iron and charcoal still glowed in the furnace. So the work was going on. The stranger had stretched himself out on the floor and lay with a piece of pig iron under his head and his hat pulled down over his eyes. As soon as the young girl caught sight of him, she went up and lifted his hat. The man was evidently used to sleeping with one eye open. Please underline this. He was in the habit of sleeping with one eye open. Why? Probably any time he would be shooed away, so he was always on the alert. And she came closer, and she lifted his hat. His hat. He jumped up abruptly and seemed to be quite frightened. He was scared. My name is Edla Williamson," said the young girl. My father came home and said that you wanted to sleep here in the forge tonight. And then I asked permission to come and bring you home to us. I'm so sorry, Captain, that you are having such a hard time. So she said that when her father told her that you would prefer to stay in the forge, I took permission of my father to bring you home. And I'm really sorry because you had to see real bad times. She looked at him compassionately. Underline this word, compassionately. Full of compassion, with her heavy eyes, and then she noticed that the man was afraid. Either he had stolen something, or else he had escaped from jail. So she could read out very clearly through his body language and his eyes that either he had stolen something, or he has escaped from jail. She thought and added quickly, "You may be sure, Captain, that you will not be allowed to leave us just as you." Will be allowed to leave us just as freely as you came. Only please stay with us over Christmas Eve. So she tried to assure him that whenever you want to leave, you can go. But you please stay with us. Come with us for the Christmas Eve. She said this in such a friendly manner. Now note the difference of treatment with by the Iron Master, whose words were like command. But here. Her words were full of compassion, very friendly. That the rat trap peddler must have felt confidence in her, <clears throat> so he felt confidence in whatever she was saying. It would never have occurred to me that you would bother me with yourself, Miss. I will come at once. So he accepted the invitation of the Iron Master's daughter. He accepted the fur coat. Which the valet handed him with a deep bow, threw over his rags, and followed the young lady to the carriage. So he accepted 